Hello everyone. My name is Lisa Jane Jacobson and I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, a teacher, and a curriculum dean at the University of Buffalo, Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. I'm also a group fitness instructor. Over the decades that I've worked as a physician, I've had the privilege of helping many women improve their health and overall wellness. Just the other day, I was talking to a patient who was concerned, as many of, of my older patients are, about the changes she was experiencing related to aging. I told her, with a little bit of a smile, that I knew the secret to where she could find the fountain of youth. I think part of her was hoping I would be able to tell her of a new discovery, a new medication, lotion, or potion um, that I could prescribe for her. I had to tell her that it would take some effort, but it would be well worth it, and that the secret lies in exercise. I'm going to share with you three things today. How I got involved in exercise instruction, what the medical benefits are of exercise, and how you can incorporate this more effectively into your life. Most people are very aware that exercise is good for them. So why isn't everyone exercising? Exercise is good medicine. My personal motivation came in part from living inside a brace like this one for years as a young adolescent. When I was diagnosed with scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, I was given the option of having a metal Harrington rod placed surgically in my back or wearing a Milwaukee brace like this one, which was designed to help my spinal column grow straight and tall. I wore it for 23 hours a day and had one hour off to shower and swim laps at a local pool. I gained a real appreciation for the value of unhindered mobility. And I knew as the years went by that in order to prevent back pain and a worsening of the curvature, I had to keep my back and my abdominal muscles, my core, strong. So I found a way to exercise. Later in life, as I studied public health and medicine, I learned about the other benefits of exercise. And like many of my patients, I wasn't willing to let my physical functioning decline if there was something that I could do about it. There's now a large body of evidence that supports the importance of maintaining an exercise routine throughout all of life. When I talk about exercise as a prescription for life, it really has two meanings to me. One, that exercise needs to be part of our regular routines from childhood to the older years. But the other meaning is that exercise is the way to continue to be full of life to have the energy and ability to run up a flight of stairs, to dance at your sister's wedding, take the bike out for a spin, or chase the grandchildren around the playground. Exercise allows us to continue to live life to the fullest, all the way to the end. We now have evidence that shows that exercise reduces the risk of developing obesity, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, osteoporosis, breast cancer, cognitive decline, and injury. It has this impact because it improves blood sugar levels, cardiopulmonary functioning, sleep, it lowers cholesterol, it increases muscle strength and endurance, it builds bone density, it improves coordination and balance, and even boosts self-image and mood. I've cared for thousands of pregnant women over the years, and you can imagine what a toll carrying an enlarging uterus with a fetus in it must take on a woman's low back. I strongly encourage our pregnant patients to participate in exercise programs to prevent that back strain and to better prepare them for childbirth and to reduce the risk of cesarean section and even prevent gestational diabetes. When I see my older patients, I emphasize the importance of maintaining bone and muscle strength. I remember being surprised years ago to learn that most 70-year-old women are not able to lift a gallon jug of milk above their heads 
with one arm without some support. That means that it would also be difficult to take a heavy appliance or a tray or a box from a shelf that was placed above their shoulders. Exercise and muscle conditioning are essential to minimize the risk of bone fractures and to preserve strength and mobility that improve the quality of life and allow women to maintain their independent living. Finally, in addition to prevention, exercise has been shown to be beneficial for the treatment of many diseases. But often, exercise is overlooked as part of the treatment plan by not just the patient, but by their doctors. Being a busy OBGYN and taking night call and raising children with my busy surgeon husband, we had to really work at managing our schedule. I decided that it would be easier to fit the group exercise classes that I enjoyed so much into my life if I could teach them myself. So I became a group fitness instructor and I've been leading community group exercises ever since. We even started a class in the medical school atrium for students, faculty, and staff, which consists of a cardiovascular routine with muscle strengthening and stretching. So how much exercise is enough? The guidelines say that at least 30 minutes to an hour, five days a week of moderate intensity exercise should be performed. But this can be broken up any way you want. If you're exercising vigorously, you can cut that time in half. Also, muscle strengthening activities of moderate or greater intensity involving all the major muscle groups should be performed at least two days a week. So how are you going to fit this exercise into your schedule? I have five tips for you. One, schedule it. However you plan your home or work activities for the week, throw exercise on that schedule. I put it right on my Google Calendar. When we schedule it into our busy week, we're much more likely to keep up with it and make it a priority. Number two, find a form of exercise that you find enjoyable. You are much more likely to continue the activity if it's fun. This could be walking, hiking, swimming, dancing, biking, taking a group exercise class or, or doing an online fitness class in your own home. Other daily activities count as well, such as gardening, vigorous house cleaning, and taking the stairs instead of the elevator whenever possible. Those minutes add up. Three, find an exercise buddy. Not only is this a nice way to spend more time with a family member or a friend that you enjoy being with, but you can make a pact to make the commitment together and hold each other accountable. Four, make it a twofer, two for the price of one. If walking or jogging is your favorite exercise, take the dog with you, push the baby in a sports stroller, listen to an audiobook or podcast, catch up with a friend by phone or in person, zone out with some favorite inspiring music, or simply give yourself time to be alone with your thoughts. Decompress from the day or practice mindful meditation. Number five, gamify it. My mother, brothers, and I used to compete with each other for steps on our Fitbits. I'm embarrassed to say my mother usually won, even into her 80s. So in summary, Exercise is extremely important for maintaining good health. It's also useful for treating many diseases. There's a large body of evidence that shows the benefits for our hearts, lungs, brain, muscles, and bones, as well as our psychological well-being. Adopting exercise as part of our everyday lives can substantially improve our health and how we feel and make great improvements in our quality of life. It's important to work that two and a half to five hours in of moderate intensity exercise every week. Work your way up to it. You can even half that time if the exercise is vigorous. But don't forget that you need to include muscle conditioning at least twice a week. Once you get the routine going, exercising is exhilarating and fun. So 
as your doctor for the past 10 minutes, I would like to write you all a prescription or uh, electronically send you an e-script for exercise. As we've discussed, the secret lies in exercise. It's a prescription for life. 